Would it be helpful if three months after a sales conversation, your prospects remembered what you said? Would it be beneficial if they could vividly retell why other businesses just like theirs chose you as the vendor or partner of choice? One way you are going to increase the likelihood of that is when you take your satisfied clients on your sales calls. Obviously, they are not going to go with you on occasions. They might. However, that is not normal. So what you are going to do is tell stories of their experience. I don't know about you. A lot of my clients say, Fripp, because that's what most of my friends and clients call me, Fripp, it seems as if some of our good prospects took seminars from people like you telling them how to resist our sales presentation. Some people might resist a sales presentation, but nobody can resist a good story well told. And what is so good about a story is we see them in our own way. You see, we use words to communicate. However, often our prospects and friends and customers remember because they see what we say. And with a well told story, that is definitely true. As part of my personal discipline, I've attended at least 10 different screenwriting classes. Not that I have the talent or the patience or the interest in being the screenwriter, but you have to admit, Hollywood knows how to tell a good story. And Robert McKee is a very, very well-known screenwriting teacher, and he says stories are the creative conversion of life itself into a powerful, clearer, more meaningful experience. And that's what our client case histories can be. How often have you sat in an audience and been mesmerized by a speaker? Was it their compelling content? Were their stories scintillating? Do they have the ability to reach out and grab you in a way you thought, wow, the speaker is talking just to me. Be honest. How many life-changing, career-building, or awe-inspiring presentations have you heard? Have you ever been that speaker? What would it mean to you and your career if you had that ability? I guarantee if you've heard a good speech, sermon, or business presentation that you enjoyed and remembered, at least one reason that made it memorable was the stories. Everybody loves a good story, and that is part of their power. No matter what our culture, we grow up feeling that hearing a story is somehow a reward. Stories are how we learn values and our family's legacy. When we're in school, stories make history come alive. In business, we quickly discover that stories help us co explain complex issues and are the best way to connect to co-workers, customers, and audiences of all sizes and makeup. Wise leaders, managers, sales professionals, professional speakers, consultants, trainers, in fact, anybody with ambition who wants to make a difference will do well to develop an arsenal of great stories. These stories will provide clear, dramatic examples. No matter what position or level you find yourself, good stories help differentiate you from your competition. Good stories that are interesting, memorable, and illustrate your message can inspire and motivate train and teach, convince and persuade. When an audience of one or 1,000 listens to your stories, they must find them interesting, 
have an emotional connection and find the lesson to be learned from them. It has to be obvious how the story ties to the points you are making at that time in your presentation. The stories that you tell in your sales conversations and presentations need to be true. They do not need to be 100% accurate. So says Michael Haig, who is a story consultant for Will Smith's production company, who is another of my good friends, collaborators, and another Hollywood uh, screenwriting teacher. This is what we mean. My friend at the Fairmont did call and say, help. What I want you to do is imagine these perhaps two, three months of conversations you had with a potential customer happened in one conversation. Imagine they said, help and could clearly articulate their problem, which in fact they might have needed you to help them articulate what was really going on. See, there is a formula to follow. Step one is the situation. And the situation needs to be delivered in your prospect's words. For example, Pat Will called and said, Patricia, as you know, we are a $2 billion software company with aspirations of being 20 billion. We're having a sales meeting at the Bellagio and we're bringing 1,500 of our salespeople from all over the world. 40% of them were acquired when we bought our major competitor. So we want everyone to know they are with the right company at the right time. Our strategy is sound, especially the 40% who did not choose to work with us. Now, the work you've done with our managers and engineers and technical demos is superb. But here is the toughest challenge of your entire career. This is not a company that has any corporate rock stars. Our president lives in Paris and he's going to be here next week and we need you to write him a speech. Make him a rock star. And you've got four hours. Now, he's not a bad speaker. Little shy, brilliant, an engineer but we need him to be a rock star. So four hours to create an engineer into a rock star, just a day in the life in the office. Now what I want you to consider is one, that conversation is true 100%. It is not 100% accurate because I've worked with them before, so I knew they were a $2 billion company with aspirations of being 20 billion. I did know they were having their meeting at the Bellagio with 1,500 people. I did know they'd bought their competitors. So I am shrinking two assignments in the one in one conversation. So if you're taking notes, one, you have to introduce the backstory of the character who is going to be in this story, which is their president. He's shy, he's brilliant, he's an engineer. Not a bad speaker, but he's not a rock star. So you need the backstory of the company, the backstory of the person, and you're shrinking all the conversations we had at this point into one. That is the situation. And when you can deliver that in the customer or prospect's words, 
because there's a difference between delivering the dialogue and reporting the dialogue. Delivering the dialogue is Patricia, as you know. And this is a great technique if you put your name in as if they were talking to you, you know and the audience knows the other person is talking reporting on the dialogue, which is not nearly as effective because you can't add the emotion to it, is uh, one of my clients called and, and asked me if I could work with their executive. He wasn't a bad speaker, but he wasn't good. And the work that we'd done before was fine and well received. But this was a very important meeting. No, that's reporting on the dialogue. Delivering the dialogue, if what you said was transcribed, the transcriptionist would know where to put the quotation marks. So that's the situation. That is in the prospect's words. And for your deliberations, imagine they said help and articulated their problem. And that's what you practice. The solution can be in your words. So as soon as I met Bernard, I said, how do you do? If you had one sentence rather than 45 minutes, what would you say? He said, this is a brand new company. I said, good, write this down. Welcome to a brand new company. I would explain the process I went through. What you would then say in your situation would explain, so what we did for the ABC company is go through our three-step process. So you would then explain the solution that you helped the company or the person in the beginning of the story because what you are now doing is answering your prospects unasked questions. If I say yes, what is going to happen? What is this going to look like? And then the success is in your prospects or your happy customer's words now. Your happy customer words in the success. If Pat Wynn were here, she would tell you, we would not have believed it possible that our brilliant president would walk on stage, be funny, poignant, dramatic, inspire action and commitment, and only had four slides. Now again, it's in the words of the now satisfied customers. Because by putting it in their dialogue, you can say about you and your company what you would feel as if you were being too salesy or showing off too much. Because if it was in your customer's words, if, if John Smith, the senior vice president of the ABC company was here, he would tell you. We would not have believed it possible that this project came in under budget and three weeks ahead of schedule. They made promises and kept promises. They, we have never had a, a vendor partner who took their assignment and our challenge as seriously. If John Smith, the senior vice president of the ABC company was here, he would tell you. We would not have believed it possible that this project came in under budget and three weeks ahead of schedule. They made promises and kept promises. They, we have never had a, a vendor partner who took their assignment and our challenge as seriously. Now, you're probably wondering, where do we get these great stories? You have them, you're probably already telling them. I suggest you revisit your website, your brochures, your marketing materials, and all those companies, and all those quotes that you have, this is where you start. In fact, if I ask you, this sounds really good, can you give me 
a couple of, of, of customers that you have that are in a similar situation that I could call for reference. Any of those people are your stories. And this is what I recommend you do. When you've completed your day, you've tidied your desk, you've got your to-do list for tomorrow, then you make three calls. You make three calls because you want to be the most interesting voicemail that the people you're calling have the next morning. And you want to leave a message that says, Hey, Don, I never get t tired of telling the story about how your wife was so excited with her new car. Or, I never get tired of telling the story about how your family loves their new house. Or, I never get tired of telling the story about how your conference was the greatest success in your 70-year company history because. Would you mind setting up a five-minute conversation where you can remind me what your challenges were before we fill in the blank what you did? What have been the results in your words? And is it okay if I tell this as an example of the services or products that we deliver? Any time that's convenient for you, let me know. I'm in the office all next week, every morning. Now, the reason that you want to leave a voicemail rather than have it in the moment is because you want them to have time to think about it. You want to be able to give them time, and when you set up the call, you want to ask their permission to record it because you want them to speak, as I absolutely 100% promise you, your satisfied clients will come up with lines and information about what you did for them that you would not come up with if you're writing it yourself. But you want them to just keep talking. And you can't write that fast. You want to record it, have it transcribed, and then tighten it up. Because you only want to have about a two or two and a half minute story max. And you might say, when everything else is equal, the best presentation wins. I absolutely 100% can promise you that the best story with characters and backstories and dialogue and the dramatic lesson learned from that story will be what they talk about weeks and months later when they're deliberating about what is the best company to do business with. And of course, at the end of the story is what was the result? And that certainly is tied into if you have any metrics and there's the, the being satisfied in the moment and the six months or a year after when they have a longer experience of your product or your service. So I challenge you to go through your website, your brochures, your recent memory. You revisit what you think about when you are giving examples. And what you need is, as you heard in the virtual FRIP, an arsenal of stories that fit every category of customer or client you might be calling on. And you have these, like your you focus phrases, in your back pocket. Now, by in your back pocket, I mean they are rehearsed, they are prepared, they're typed, they're scripted, they're ready. You're not quite sure when you're going to deliver them. They are just there when the moment comes. And with your brand new salespeople, these are company stories and case histories that they learn just the way you learn anything else. How do you learn a song? 
I just helped a songwriter write a speech uh, to be considered to be elected president of his association against a much bigger celebrity. He said, well, how do I remember it? How do you remember a song? You, you internalize it. And you need to internalize them the same as your open and your concluding remarks and the questions you ask so well that if your spouse elbowed you in the middle of the night, you could tell the story. You need to know it so well you can forget it. And then trust it's there when you want it.